David Aiken here with Checker Ed Brewing with another Tips and Tricks episode for homebrewers around the world. Now today I'm going to talk about oxygenating the wort. That means getting oxygen in it so that the yeast has a source of oxygen so it can properly ferment. Now I've just had a great brew day. My fermenter here is full of wort that's been chilled down to temperature. I've got yeast standing by just over here to pitch into that wort. But before I do, I need to get the oxygen into that liquid so that the yeast has the best chance it has for survival propagation and then it will start to convert those fantastic sugars we got out from the brew day into the alcohol and CO2 that we want in the finished beer. Now in a commercial situation, oxygen is put in during the transfer process. So between the boil kettle goes through a chiller and then from the chiller it goes to the fermenter. And in line there is an oxygen, like a, an aeration stone that puts oxygen into the wort as the wort is transferred. Here in a homebrew situation, I've transferred all the wort into my fermenter and now I need to oxygenate it. Now, when I first got started, I used an aeration stone on the end of a hose with an air filter and then I attached this end to a goldfish bubbler. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Uh, then a friend of mine explained that this fantastic contraption does an even better job and even faster time. Now, I have seen homebrewers use actual pure oxygen in a situation like this so that the oxygen is 100% oxygen going into your wort. Now that's a great way to do it and in about three minutes that oxygen does the job and gives that wort everything it needs to have a successful ferment. When you're just using regular oxygen and a goldfish bubbler, I found it usually took about 30, 20 to 30 minutes for there to be enough oxygen in there because in just regular air it's only about 20 percent oxygen in the atmosphere so you need to let it bubble longer so that oxygen from the atmosphere can get into your wart. Now I'll show you what that looks like. Now that aeration stone in the carboy it's a stone that takes the stream of oxygen and then breaks it up into tiny tiny little bubbles and those bubbles flow through the liquid and up. Now again I mentioned that it's about 20 percent oxygen in the atmosphere so I would let that run for about 30 minutes and then figured it had enough oxygen in and had great ferments every single time. But here's another way to do it, which I like even more. So a few months ago, I went for a brew day with my buddy Tim and he had this cool tool for aerating his wort that I just loved. And I went and got one myself and it just is amazing. It's a spinner, stainless steel with plastic bars on the end that will, if you're using a carboy for your fermentation, it totally works because you can drop that into the carboy itself It'll go in nicely, and those paddles will spin out and widen out, and then you get a, a drill on your high speed setting so it's going really fast. And now watch this, this is amazing. It creates a vortex, much like you do on a yeast starter, but on a much larger scale. And in about three minutes, you can create the aerated wort that you need so that the fermentation can happen in a really great way. minutes you get enough oxygen into your wort so that it's ready to go for a fantastic fermentation. Now I'm going to do it to mine. I'm going to show you what the wort looks like before I start and then I'm going to show you the frothy, frothy goodness that comes out at the end. Okay so I've got the lid off of the fermenter. Here it is. It's a SS Brutex 7 gallon fermenter. They're fantastic. I highly recommend them. Big open space at the top here. Easy to work with and uh, really really easy to clean. Now, the wort's been transferred from the batch I brewed today. You can see that there's a bit of foam on the top just from the transfer process itself. But what's really going to happen is that's going to turn into a thick, foamy, oxygen-rich, wonderful environment for that yeast to be pitched into so that it will have an incredible ferment. So I'm going to set it up and we'll get it all going. You'll see exactly what it looks like at the end. So here we are again. Uh, I've got the drill attached to the spinner, and the spinner's in the fermenter, and I've got the lid on the fermenter so it doesn't splash up. We're ready to go. Let's see what happens. I'm going to take three minutes right now, spin it up, and then I'm going to show you the frothy, frothy goodness that will give that fermentation all the oxygen it needs to do a fantastic job. Great, so we're done. Now, I'm going to take the lid off and I'm going to show you a little bit closer up exactly how foamy that wort has become. Wow! Check out the froth that's on top of this wort. Nice, thick, 
rich. It is going to give the yeast an incredible environment to propagate and give you an absolutely incredible ferment. So no matter where you are in the world, have a great brew day, oxygenate your wort, and we'll see you next time. I'm David Aiken for Checkerhead Brewing. Mm -hmm.